Hi, my name is Sheila Corona. Welcome to Handbook for the New Paradigm, Volumes 1, 2, and 3. We are in Volume 3. The title is Becoming, and this is session number 8. For those of you who may be following along with me in the book, we are on page 271. And it begins, As the willing members of those in human focus awaken to the plight that surrounds them, it is clear to them that the situation is indeed serious and that no amount of physical resistance can change this. It is apparent that something else must be done to bring a change to their future experience on this planet. Through the consideration of the larger picture, it also becomes clear that the lack of understanding of not only the history of their origins, but the lack of a true purpose for existence on this planet has left them bereft and adrift like flotsam in the sea. At the basis of each one's awareness, there is a weary wonderment that says to each, why bother? <laughs> Quote, what reason is there that is worth striving for to maintain life in this physical body? Uh, why is this utopia that is promised as a reward for the effort that must be put forth in this human experience? <laughs> Does it even exist? Uh, is there only a short rest before we begin over again with another life of disappointment and frustration? Why is there such a sense of participating in a spiral of experience that leads to the, quote, same old, same old, and even less <laughs> each lifetime? There is a song that says the answer is, quote, blowing in the wind, the wind of change. There is a point at which the thought patterns mentioned above reach a place within the consciousness that causes a shift. A purpose is sought, not in the world of the five senses that is called reality, but within the awareness. Each, within every lifetime, is called upon to find their purpose, not in the world of effort but from within the space of awareness that is only found at the center of the awareness that knows itself. That's been my question a lot, not just of myself, right? But of the general citizenry. I, I, I've been amazed at, and I've asked the question many, many times, do folks even ask themselves that question? What, I mean, is this really all there is? Is this what we're meant to do here? And surely to goodness, it can't be just this hamster wheel that, that, you know, the rat race that everybody talks about, right? I, I've wondered that where, why is it that not more people are asking themselves these questions? I mean, that's a and that's a genuine wondering that I have. So back to the book here. This awareness of the self was the gift from the, quote, tree of knowledge that the religious soothsayers have spent so much time attempting to teach as a great mistake. This is the shift that lifted humanity out of the animal kingdom and placed them at the top at the edge of the kingdom of those beings that, quote, know who and what they are, end quote. So who and what are they? Beings that are little, if any different than what you who is reading this is. They may have greater use of their brain capacity that enables them to know and do things that seem miraculous to those of lesser understanding. However, if you look at the progress made in that area in the past century on this planet, that is of little consequence in the dilemma of knowing who and what you are in the search for this greater acquisition of knowledge. 
are these gods that have come and gone from this planet at their will and left you in such awe of their accomplishments that you worship them as all-knowing, really all-knowing? Through the research of the artifacts of past civilizations that are now available and have been studied, cataloged, and conclusions drawn, it is clear to the few that have availed themselves of this knowledge that humanity has been led down the primrose path. One ideology after another has been thrust upon innocent mankind in their search for their purpose and their origins to keep them in darkness and ignorance. The question is, why? What purpose could beings of more intelligence have for deliberately causing their planetary relatives to be misled and their evolutionary progress diverted into a backwater rather than leading them onward and upward into full citizenship and responsibility within the galactic family? <clears throat> Could there be a character flaw within the genetic expression of that particular group of beings? Could, could that character flaw have been carried on through to those of humanity that have the intermingled blood of those particular apparently superior beings? The expansive flow of the universal energies that underlay the manifestation of potentiality into expression requires that knowledge be experienced into wisdom. There is at the center of all infinite patience for this to be accomplished within non-linear expression. This is a concept that the human mind, unless fully activated, has great difficulty in understanding. Within holographic experience, simultaneous interactions are occurring without the limitations of linear sequential time frames. In other words, what appear to those of less active mind slash brain capabilities as experiences happening one after the other are indeed playing out in other experiential formats simultaneously. Now that's something that I've long suspected that it that explains how we can all be one and yet singular in nature. Multidimensionality, everything happening at once. We think it's a past life experience or a future life experience when indeed we are getting a glimpse into the other, I, I, I call it realms for, for be, just for the sake of separation in my mind, but that doesn't necessarily mean that. So back to the book here, thus a picture is being completed with more than one activity going on with no time constraints for beginning or completion. For all is in constant motion with only momentary rest periods of inactivity. These momentary periods of inactivity are those incidents of realization of wisdom acquired through the experiencing of knowledge to points of understanding. Thus wisdom is gained so that the process is continuously expans expansive. No, sorry, so that the process is continued expansively. The apparent character flaws that have held mankind in a delusional state of false and misleading knowledge that is impossible to experience into wisdom has been a twofold situation. First, the flaw by the more knowledgeable, self-appointed overlords of this planet who have jealously guarded their perceived superiority and the flow of humanity in thinking they are lesser and thus the pawns of these beings. 
because ones have less understanding does not make them of less potentiality. It is potentiality that is the measure of worth and mankind has equal potentiality with any and every other expression of self-awareness. It is in making this realization and demanding the opportunity to self-express into this potentiality that will free mankind on this planet to accomplish this purpose. This demand as a personal decision made within each one's own inner knowingness will bring about the change from victim slash slave to sovereign owner of his slash her future individually and collectively. It is a rising up from within that will in proper order progress into the reality of known experience for this planet. How long this process will take within the linear time reality that is processed through the human ego or the ability to observe at this stage of evolution remains to be chosen by humanity itself. And that's the end of number eight, and I will return with number nine uh, in just a few moments.